All runway markings are to be conspicuous and convey useful information to pilots. They are to present uneven friction characteristics on the runway and should be skid resistant. Any markings are normally white, but on some lighter coloured runways, outlining the white in black makes them more identifiable. At the threshold of all paved and where possible unpaved runways will be a runway designator. It shall consist of a two-digit number which is the nearest 10 degrees to magnetic heading. A pair of runways will be differentiated by adding the designator L or R to denote left or right runways. Should there be three runways, the centre one shall be designated with a letter C. In some cases there are four parallel runways, and here the magnetic heading of the runway is paired, one pair given a magnetic heading 10 degrees apart from the other pair. In the future, some larger airports will be developed and have six parallel runways, and the existing principle of dividing the runways into threes will be used to identify them. Down the centre of a paved runway will be a centreline marking, which will lie along the middle of the runway between the runway designation marks. It shall consist of uniformly spaced stripes and gaps, the stripes being not less than 50 metres or longer than 75 metres. Each stripe will be the same length as the gap or be 30 metres long, whichever is greater. A threshold marking will be provided at the thresholds of paved instrument runways and of paved non-instrument runways where the code number is 3 or 4 and the runway is used for international commercial air transport. For code 3 or 4 non-instrument runways that are used for operations other than commercial air transport, it is only recommended that the thresholds of runways be marked. Unpaved runways should have threshold markings if possible. The threshold marking stripes should start 6 metres from the threshold and will be a pattern of longitudinal stripes of uniform dimensions, placed symmetrically about the centre line of the runway for a width of 45 metres. For non-precision instrument and non-instrument runways, if the runway is wider than that, then the stripes may be placed either side of the designation number. The stripes will extend laterally to within 3 metres of the edge of the runway or to a distance of 27 metres on either side of a runway centreline, whichever is smaller. There will be a minimum of three stripes either side of the runway designator if it is placed within the threshold markings. Where the designator is above the threshold markers, the stripe shall extend across the runway. The stripes will be at least 30 metres long and have approximately 1.8 metres between them, except when the two stripes nearest the centre line will be double-spaced. The number of threshold stripes that will be painted onto a runway is dependent upon the width of the runway itself and is shown here. Where a threshold is displaced from the end of a runway or is not square with the runway centre line, a transverse stripe should be added to the threshold marking. When the threshold is permanently displaced from the end, then arrows pointing to the threshold should be provided on the portion before it. Markings for temporary displacements are often like this. An aiming point marker is to be provided at each approach end of code 2, 3 or 4 paved instrument runways. It will consist of two conspicuous stripes. The aiming point marking shall start no closer to the threshold than the distances indicated in the table shown here. Except where a runway is equipped with a visual approach slope indicator system, when the beginning of the marking shall be coincident with the visual approach slope origin. Touchdown zone markings are to be provided on code 2, 3 and 4 paved precision approach runways. They will consist of pairs of rectangular markings symmetrically are placed about the runway centre line, with the number of pairs relating to the landing distance available. The table shown here shows the number of pairs of touchdown zone markers that are applied to differing lengths of runway.
The sides of a runway are to be marked between the thresholds where there is a lack of contrast between the runway edges and shoulders and the surrounding terrain. It is recommended that precision runways are painted with side stripes in every instance. Taxiway markings and aircraft stand markings are to be painted yellow. Centerline markings shall be provided on paved taxiways, de-icing facilities or aprons, where the code number is 3 or 4, in such a way as to provide pilot guidance from the runway centerline to the point on the apron where aircraft stand markings commence. The runway holding position marking is to be displayed at a runway holding position and is to extend all the way across the taxiway, and will be such that the holding aircraft will not interfere with aerodrome navigational aids. There are two distinct patterns of runway holding markings, known as patterns A and B. A taxiway intersection marking should be displayed at the intersection of two paved taxiways, where it is desired to designate a specified holding limit for aircraft approaching the same intersection. It shall consist of a single broken yellow line. The edge of a taxiway may well be paved, but might not be available for use by aircraft, so a taxiway edge marking is used to indicate the extent of the usable taxiway. It will consist of the marking shown here. The high utilisation and complexity of the taxiways and aprons at some modern airports make it especially important that clear markings are in place to enable pilots to park their aircraft efficiently and safely. The markings should be clear and distinguishable enough to be readable from the cockpit of aircraft. White markings on an apron are intended for the guidance, control and movement of ground service vehicles. White hatch diagonal markings adjacent to an aircraft parking stand delineate an area that ground servicing vehicles should not stop or park in. To help control traffic crossing runways, visual road holding position markings are provided. They are located across the road at the holding position and are marked in accordance with local traffic regulations. Some aerodromes provide markings to highlight safe pedestrian access lanes to and from the aircraft and terminal building. Associated signs are green, with a white border inset and a pedestrian symbol inside. Safety lines are to be marked on a paved apron to indicate the acceptable limit of parking ground equipment adjacent to aircraft parking stands. The line should be a colour that distinguishes them from taxiway or apron markings. They are normally a red box, inset by a white border. Shown here is a typical stand layout. At those airports where visual docking guidance is provided, a variety of different stand layouts and markings are used. You do not need to know about these systems for the ATPL Air Law exam, but the basic principles are explained here. Visual Docking Guidance Systems, VDGS, sometimes called Nose-In Docking Guidance Systems, or Stand Entry Guidance Systems, SEG, provide guidance where accurate aircraft parking is required. This is usually the case where air bridges are used. Commonly used VDGS are the Azimuth Guidance for Nose-In Stands, or AGNIS, supported by the Parallax Aircraft Parking Aid, or PAPA. In some cases, mirrors are installed to permit a pilot to view the position of the nose wheel of the aircraft relative to the stopping position. At major aerodromes, Advanced Visual Docking Guidance Systems, AVDGS, are installed that provide electronic information, such as the azimuth position of the aircraft and stopping distance. In some cases, the AVDGS determines the aircraft type automatically and sets the relevant guidance parameters accordingly. Mandatory signs are holding point signs, runway designators coloured white on a red background, and no entry signs. If it is impractical to have a sign at these points, 
then the information shall be marked on the surface of the taxiway pavement. The no entry marking should be the written words rather than the circular sign. And at some airports, runway ahead is marked rather than the runway designator. Information markings should complement information signs and will consist of inscriptions in yellow when they replace or supplement location signs and inscriptions in black when they replace or supplement direction or destination signs. If there is insufficient contrast with the paved surface, then the yellow shall be on a black background and the black on a yellow background.